What's up, Gemini? Hey! <laughs> Welcome to my channel. My name's Kaylee. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I, <clears throat> before I start uh, pulling cards or shuffling or anything like that, I actually just want to light. This is actually, this is cedar, actually, not, not sage. I do have some sage, but I want to actually start with some gratitudes uh, because... Tomorrow is the day that Jupiter finally turns direct. And yes, this reading will be about Mars retrograde. However, um, Jupiter going direct is a big deal. I'm really excited and grateful because uh, I was approved today for some financial assistance that I've been waiting for and applied for more than a year ago. And... Um, It came through today. Today. It came through today. Oh, I still have to wait a couple of months before I'll actually see any of it, but that's okay. <laughs> I can wait 60 days. What's 60 days more, right? Anyway, I'm so fucking grateful. I've been praying for this, and I've been pouring my heart and my, my soul into this, this channel, into doing this, because... I'm really passionate about this. <sighs> anyway, I wanted to share that with you guys because it's a big deal. It's a really big deal. And now, uh, now my makeup's running. <laughs> I, <don't, laughs> I wasn't gonna record today, and then, um, and then I got that news, and I was like, "Whoa! Well, I have to record today now." <laughs> Because when you put value out into the universe, the universe brings you value back. It does. That's how it works. And, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, he can't see that. So, for this month, oh, for this reading, I'm using the Druid Craft Tarot by Philip and Stephanie Cargom, illustrated by Will Worthing. Him? Worthington. Worthington. Sorry. Sorry, Will. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's based on, um, well, Jude Craft, obviously, and uh, Wicca. Wicca. So it's a really, really earthy and warm deck. Oh, man. <clears throat> I didn't mean to cry on camera, but there you go. Emotions. <laughs> Oh, vulnerability is important. Anyway, Gemini, I'm happy to do this reading. I'm happy to be here. I'm so, so grateful. I'm so grateful for the internet, for uh, YouTube, for this, this platform. And... Uh, yeah, uh, like the astrological weather just lined up so perfectly. The sun, the sun is in Virgo. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. The weather just lined up perfectly, and um, I'm really <clears throat> happy to do this reading for you. Okay, so... Gemini. This is for Mars Retrograde 2020. Mars Retrograde will last until November 13th or 14th, something along those lines. <sighs> Jupiter goes direct tomorrow, which is exciting and I think will bring some like relief. So let's see what's going on for Gemini. I have a very dear Gemini friend who I hope will watch this. She will. <laughs> so I'm gonna do a nine nine card <clears throat> nine card box spread. Um, and I will read it vertically, going vertical, and then going horizontal. 
uh, uh, first row indicates past things, middle row the present, last row future things, uh, the top row indicates what's like in our mind, in the ethereal, what are we thinking about, in the middle is kind of like what's in our hearts, what's, what's happening, and the bottom is like, uh, <clears throat> the actual manifestations or things that are grounding us, that type of thing. So, Gemini. Wow, that was a major emotional pick me up. Whoa, okay. <laughs> the Gemini. Shit. Okay, so the underlying energy, Gemini, is the Seven of Swords. Uh, hold on, we gotta... I think I need to clean my camera lens. Okay, that's better. So the underlying energy is the Seven of Swords. There's <clears throat> kind of like two main ways to look at this. You can either see it as... And like, you can tell me how this resonates for you, but you can see this as someone interfering with your like mental process um or it could just indicate uh like a really strong intellectual mind that is uh looking for strategies and clever ways to go about things so that could indicate that someone is being manipulative or yeah, manipulative or Machiavellian. That's a big word for you. <sighs> My Geminis. I love Gemini energy. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> oh, oh boy. So one card flew out and that is the center card. And I'm putting these all around. Fascinating. Ah, oh, yes. Okay, so there's a couple of differences with this deck. Um, from the traditional tarot, they've just renamed a couple of things, and none of those cards came out, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. <laughs> yes. Okay, so. First row in the past. We have the Four of Wands, which is about, put it on this side, Four of Wands is stability. Uh, sometimes this can be viewed as like a marriage card, whereas like commitments and just like stability is the only real word that's coming to mind right now. So we're going, we're going with that <laughs> in the physical realm, but this is in your headspace. In the middle, however, is the five of pentacles and then underneath the five of pentacles is the six of wands. So... Oh, that's interesting. Four, five, six. Hmm. So in our headspace, we have some at least ideas of stability or maybe you're thinking about commitments or marriage or some kind of partnership. Not necessarily like marriage. It doesn't have to be a romantic thing. It could be uh, like uh, like business partnerships or, or roommate type deals. But the Five of Pentacles typically indicates, like, a, a sense of lack. Um, the art on this card is very different from how the Rider Waite does it. But this is actually the moon in Taurus. So it is the... It's the first deacon of Taurus. I have to count them every time. <laughs> anyway... The moon actually loves being in Taurus. According to Vedic astrology, the the favorite wife of the moon is Rohini, which is in Taurus. Just a little aside for you. But anyway. Hmm. And there's this dog chasing a hare here chasing she's not chasing anything but the dog is chasing 
interesting. Um, yeah, so that's typically like financial insecurity. What I'm kind of getting from this card in this position is like you are chasing after this. Um, but underneath that is the six of wands. This is a pretty a pretty um, positive card. This is like uh, victory and valor and um, sixes are all about balance. It's it's a really it's a it's really beautiful, really. Uh, it's as if you have a a unity between two parts in yourself. That is really what the six speaks to me of and yeah because of this like inner unity that you're feeling or at the very least you're giving off that energy of I uh, I am victorious I ride at the head of the pack uh, mm -hmm. yeah like this this man is he has authority right so anyway, that's the first row. That's like kind of like in the past. In the center row, however, we have the Magician, the Tower, and the Eight of Wands. Eight of Wands. So this, in the present position, well, first of all, the Tower is what came out and, and flew out. And I was like, oh yeah, that's it. <laughs> this whole year has been one long Tower moment, but... The tower is Mars, essentially coming in to destroy anything and everything that was built on shaky foundations. Ouch. But in a headspace with the magician, this is number one in the major arcana. The magician uses all four elements. So he's holding his wand and he's got the other three there. He uses all four elements. Um, <laughs> and there's the... the rooster there is that a rooster or is that a hen oh it is a rooster rooster indicating the the male masculine feel of the card so anyway he uses all four elements to command his reality sorry i'm just looking at his jewelry He's, he's very well dressed. Which I think really speaks to the abundance that you're trying to manifest in your life. Whether that be physical money <clears throat> or abundance of... I think it has a lot to do with this. The, the physical stability you're looking for. And underneath the Tower of the Eight of wands this definitely talks about messages being shared back and forth or one way so maybe you are talking to somebody about what it is that you want to manifest and the the next row over the future row we have the high priestess this is a highly feminine energy this is number two in the major arcana I'm trying to make it so the glare isn't so bad they're very shiny cards which is great but not great when you have lights <laughs> so the high priestess this card is ruled by the moon and it is and it's right beside the magician i just noticed that interesting so you make this i'll get i'll get to that but you're you're making a transition from a more like uh, uh, masculine kind of like drive to a more receptive I just I just made the motion a more receptive feminine way of going about things so the high priestess just said the key words there it's the feminine um, version right she is doing a ceremony of drawing down the moon and her arms are held in the position of like the womb to receive <sighs> i think this could indicate 
a shift from that chasing energy to being willing to receive. Um, yes. So right underneath the high priestess is death. Dun, dun, dun. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm not sorry. <laughs> Enjoy my weirdness, okay? All right. So yes, death right underneath the high priestess. High priestess, death, and then the ace of swords. Almost like this ace of swords that's in your physical reality that has been manifested will cause some kind of spiritual death and transformation to occur, which will put you in this more receptive state. That's what I think is going to happen. So let's go about this horizontally. So in our headspace, four of wands and then the magician, and then the high priestess. This says to me, <clears throat> we're looking and trying to manifest that that stability. It's literally the only word that's coming to mind when I see that is just stability. Um, yeah. And we've been, or we're in the state right now of trying to go about that by using our, uh, our skills, our mental faculties, and... Mm, yeah, it may or may not be working. And then, yeah, and then we make this transition from going, I, I already said it, but I'm going to say it again. We make this transition from going from um, uh, working on physically manifesting it to being ready and open to receiving and using our intuition. That's another thing about the high priestess. It's not uh, a logic like cranial force. It's not a it's not a um, cerebral force. It's a it's a bodily energetic force. Hope I hope that makes sense. Okay, <clears throat> in the middle row, five of pentacles, lack, chasing, but unable to see the wealth that is actually already there the tower boom mars is coming in destroying things this could this doesn't have to be like a huge major uh physical thing it could be something as simple as something is causing you to shift your belief structures uh <clears throat> especially if you are like more on your path than others if someone is not on their path and they're not doing really good for themselves or they're, you know, they're, they're not listening to, oh, they're not listening to their intuition, they're not listening to what universe is trying to tell them, then the tower moment tends to be more painful and bigger. But, you know, it comes for everybody. And then underneath that, the eight of wands. Whoa. There's so much energy in this, it flew out of my hand. <laughs> yeah, the Eight of Wands is a card of Mercury in Sagittarius. So, definitely a lot of Mercury stuff going on right now. So, it's, it's mental things. <sighs> Sometimes I get so excited and uh, just, like, go off with what I know that I forget that not everybody knows what I know. So, I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> well, <laughs> back it up a little bit. <clears throat> oh crap yeah anyway and the tower is causing spiritual transformation i i'm just i'm so excited that i forgot what where i was in the the grid there i'm so sorry i'm not re-recording this this is going up as is so yeah this feeling of lack is is probably going to contribute to the tower moment but honestly towers happen no matter what and then, because ch change is inevitable. Change happens, period. That is, in fact, the only constant of life is there is always change. So, when that happens, not if, when, accept and surrender. And uh, it, it'll be a little bit easier. Not saying it's going to be like 
easy easy but it'll be easier if you accept the change and allow the tower the more you resist um the more it persists thanks carl young <laughs> what we resist persists okay and in the bottom row six of wands eight of wands ace of swords six of wands valor victory nobility balance within the self eight of wands oh also like nobility eight of wands sending receiving messages very passionate messages about passions <laughs> and then ace of swords there's some truth or some new insight that you gain or deliver as a result of everything else that happens. This is pretty quick. I'm surprised. I wonder actually how this Seven of Swords fits in. Uh, uh, okay, so you do have a lot of mental stuff, mental energy going on in this. Um, this is the only sword card, but I'm talking to Gemini. And uh, it seems as though it's hard to say whether this Eight of Wands is like what ultimately causes the tower and whether it's a tower that's happening in your life internally or in somebody else's life that's near you. But it is in the center, so it's, it's probably something very directly related to you. Um, yeah, but don't fear. Don't fear the tower. Accept whatever change is going to come. <sighs> Five of Pentacles, Tower, Death. I feel like there's, like, a victory here. The Lady of the Lake. <laughs> it's so triumphant like I feel like there's a really deep victory here and like I don't feel like this is any kind of like manipulation or treachery I feel like this is more uh you just trying to wrap your mind around a situation and yeah it doesn't look like you're having a very good time <laughs> Mm -hmm. I hope that by the end of this period, you're able to see that, like, this first row, you have this card of lack, but you're actually, like, victorious. You're being very victorious. So I feel like this tower is most likely going to be a destruction of that false belief. And it's really, really hard to let go of false beliefs. I know, from experience. Um, especially when it comes to our self-worth and uh, what we believe about ourselves. So, <laughs> it's going to be painful, but I think that this tower is very positive for you, Gemini. Ah, my camera cut out. <laughs> I ran out of space, but if you're looking for a personal reading, Gemini, I would love to help you out. Uh, I read tarot, or I have a couple oracle card decks, and uh, I also do elder futhark runes, which are super cool. Anyway, I hope you guys have a good time. Um, yeah, stay safe out there, and, uh, yeah, you got this. See you later.